Aruba, 2004. Picture this. Turquoise water, those white sand beaches, sun shining, the DeVries family, they're escaping to paradise, you know, mm -hmm. trying to heal a little bit after losing their dad. Yeah. 14-year-old Max, his mommy Vaughn, younger sister Dominique, they're just searching for a little peace, a little solace. But um, going on, Phonics is a getaway. It takes a devastating turn. And that's why we're here. You brought us this heart-wrenching cold case, and we are diving into Paramount's Never Seen Again. We've also got some really solid investigative work from W7's Heather Catalo to dig into. Right. So, really, what can we uncover about Max's disappearance? Well, and a cold case, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, it's an unsolved crime, often a missing person case, where that active investigation has ceased. So these cases are so difficult to crack. But... Yvonne's dedication to finding answers. I mean, it's both inspiring, frankly, and it's the driving force behind this whole deep dive. Absolutely. You can feel that unwavering commitment. Like, it just radiates from Yvonne in this documentary. Oh, yeah. She talked about Max being so excited for this jet ski trip, practically vibrating with anticipation. Wow. Can you imagine, though, being a mother, already dealing with the loss of your spouse, and then your son vanishes during what should have been a fun, carefree outing? It's just... Yeah. It's unimaginable and you know it's easy to overlook how vulnerable you are as a tourist especially when you're a family already dealing with grief right like could that emotional state have made them a target it's a question that really hangs over this whole case especially wow. as we get into the details yeah okay let's do that let's unpack this yeah so max heads out on this jet ski ride with an older man someone they met at the resort seems like you know pretty normal vacation behavior right right except this man returns alone uh-oh <laughs> and that's where things get really complicated. Yeah, complicated and honestly very suspicious. This man, he gives all these conflicting accounts to the Aruban authorities. First, it's engine failure on Max's jet ski. Then it's, oh, I was trying to tow Max, but we both ended up stranded. And then finally, he says he saw Max swimming towards the shore. In each version of this story, it seems to unravel just a little bit more. Uh, it's baffling. Like, Why? if you were responsible for a young teen who was suddenly lost at sea, wouldn't you be panicking? Wouldn't you be raising the alarm like crazy, desperate for any kind of help? Of course. His actions just don't seem to line up with the situation at all. Exactly. It makes you wonder, was he genuinely trying to help or were these inconsistencies, you know, were they an attempt to cover up something much more sinister? Right. And those are the questions that have just lingered for 20 years. And it makes you think about what, the media landscape was like back then. This was 2004. Pre-social media, cases, they didn't instantly get blasted across the globe. Right. Imagine if this happened today, the immediate outcry, you know, the social media sleuths, all that pressure on the authorities. Oh, totally. Could that have actually made a difference here? It's a chilling thought. Did this case, did it slip through the cracks because it didn't have that instant global spotlight? It's possible. We're talking, what, a year later, yeah. same location, Natalie Holloway disappears. And it's a media frenzy instantly. Yeah. It yeah. makes you wonder, how much impact does that public pressure have on these investigations? Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, media attention, it can be a double-edged sword. I'm like, sure. But it can also be a catalyst. And you look at the difference in the response. You know, between Max's case and Natalie's, it raises some uncomfortable questions about how we, as a society, prioritize and react to these tragedies. Right. But, you know, even without that 24-7 news cycle, that social media pressure, there were people, though, who refused to let Max's case fade away. People like his sister, Dominique. She was only 12 at the time. Wow. And in the documentary, she talks about just this sinking feeling, knowing something was wrong. She says, there's that moment where you're just like, it's been too long. Something is not right. Those gut feelings, I mean, they're powerful. And for Yvonne, that mother's intuition, it only intensified as time went on. And she was relentless, you know, dedicated her life to uncovering the truth. And that led her to connect with a retired detective from Michigan, Corey Williams. Okay, and this is where it gets really interesting. Corey Williams he starts digging into the background of this man mm -hmm. who was last seen with Max, and he uncovers this disturbing allegation from 1981. Yeah, this is years, we're talking, before Max was even born. Right. And this discovery just throws a whole new wrench into everything. Williams found that this man had been accused of sexual misconduct with a minor decades earlier. Oh, okay. So we need to be very clear here. This information... It doesn't directly link him to Max's disappearance. Right. And he has not been charged with anything related to Max. Right. But it's a chilling detail, and it's one that Yvonne believes warrants a much closer look. 
Absolutely. And this is where things get incredibly complex, because how much weight can you place on past allegations like that, especially when you're trying to build a case decades later? I mean, it's a question that investigators and legal experts, they grapple with all the time. It's going to be so frustrating for Yvonne. She spent years, years urging the FBI to reopen the case, believing this information is a crucial piece of the puzzle. It, it just it speaks to the limitations of our legal system in some ways, because you need that concrete evidence, right? You need that smoking gun to move forward. And that can feel impossible to find, you know, years after something like this has happened. Right. It's why cold cases are so difficult to solve. You know, the trail's gone cold. Evidence is lost. Memories fade. And yet. Yvonne hasn't given up. In Heather Cuddle's report, you could just, I mean, her frustration and just desperation, it's palpable. Yeah. She asks, was my son set up to be taken in Aruba? Oh, wow. It's a question that haunts her. And you can't help but feel the weight of that question as a listener. Absolutely. It yeah. really gets to you. And then you hear Yvonne talk about the lack of closure. You know? Yeah. She says, for a little boy who was lost and taken from his sister, his family, for all those who loved and missed him, to not even still have a death certificate to this day, I mean... It's just, it's the kind of pain that never really heals, amplified by all those unanswered questions. Right. But what Yvonne is doing, you know, speaking out, demanding attention for Max's case, it's so important. Yeah. She's keeping his memory alive and hopefully inspiring someone somewhere to come forward, you know? with new information. And she really does. In the W7 report, she makes this really direct plea. She says, there's an FBI file with an active number. If they can just reactivate that number and get that case activated again, that's all we need. Wow. It, it makes you realize the power of just a voice of keeping these cases in the public eye. It really does. And it highlights something so crucial about cold cases. Sometimes the tiniest detail, something someone might not even realize is important, that can be the key to unlocking everything. That's true. Maybe someone listening right now, maybe you were in Aruba back in May of 2004. Maybe you were at that same resort. Maybe you saw something that seemed just a little bit odd at the time, but you dismissed it. Right. Even the smallest detail, a conversation overheard, a face in the crowd, a vehicle that seemed out of place. Right. It could be that missing piece of the puzzle. It's a lot. Mm. And it makes you realize how, I don't know, how easily something like this can happen, how quickly life can just yeah. change. Yeah. And this deep dive, you know, it, it was about Max, his family, their unwavering fight for answers. But it's also just a reminder that even after 20 years, justice, mm -hmm. it is possible. It is. It takes persistence, public awareness, and sometimes all it takes is just one person coming forward with information they didn't even realize was important. Wow. Don't ever underestimate the impact you could have by simply sharing what you know. No matter how small, how insignificant you think it might be, your willingness to speak up could bring a family some peace. 